An airplane is heading north at an airspeed, excuse me, an airspeed of 600 kilometers per hour, but there is a wind blowing from the northwest at 60 kilometers per hour. Okay, so the first thing we do is we draw this northward facing or this northward heading airplane. So this is north. Okay, and we can label this 600 kilometers per hour. Now, the reason why, um, well, this is what the airplane is. So now that we have the airplane drawn, then we can bring in the wind. Now, the wind is, its magnitude is 60 kilometers per hour, and it's from the northwest. That means it's coming from this direction north and if west would be over here. So at a 45 degree angle and it's traveling in this direction like this. So it's, but since it's only 60 kilometers per hour, we want to make this a little bit smaller or at least significantly smaller than the planes heading. Okay, so we can call this one the wind vector and it's going 60 kilometers per hour. So with the heading of the airplane going north and the wind pushing it, um, so it has a component that, that of the wind that goes down and a component of the wind that goes to the right. So it's going to slow the the airplane down a little bit and it's going to push it off course. So the, this vector right here is going to slow it down and this vector over here is going to push it off course. So when you put those two together we can we can add them head to tail. So let's use another color, green. So, so we've got the airplane in red plus the wind in blue so if we add the airplane plus the wind, we start at the tail of the airplane and we head straight towards, okay, let me try to make that straighter. Okay, then we head it straight towards the, um, the wind vectors head part of it. So this is the resulting vector right here, the result. Okay, now there's a number of different ways to come up with with this, with the magnitude and the direction of this vector right here. Now the magnitude is the length and the direction off course would then be um, the vector between, I mean the angle between the plane's heading, it was the way it was trying to go north, and the way it resulted going because of, because of the wind pushing it. Um, so let's see, let's just start filling in things we know, okay? Since a wind that's coming at the northwest, we know that that means it has, if it's coming from the northwest, it's pointing in the southeast and it has a 45 degree angle from the horizontal direction or from the, uh, from the west east direction or it's also 45 here between the the north or the the plane's direction the northward pointing plane's direction and the um the wind's direction so we can put in 45 degrees right here so that's 45 degrees um let's see what else do we know we know the magnitude of this side right here, and we know the magnitude of this side right here, and we know the angle in between. So we could use the law of cosines to come up with the magnitude of the resulting vector. But what we also know is we know that these can be written in component form. So the 600 mile an hour vector is going only in the positive y direction. So we would say it's in component wise, it's 600 comma, uh, I mean 0 comma 600. Okay, so that would be its vector, its component form of the vector. Now, the, um, over here with the, with the wind vector, it has a component 
that heads east in the positive x direction and south in the negative y direction. And because we know the angle that it makes, this 45 degree angle here, we can come up using um, what we know about right triangles, we can come up with the components in the x direction. So x is going to be 60 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And the y component is going to be 60, so the magnitude or the hypotenuse, times the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, and so we know that because of unit circle values, we know the cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2, and we know the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. So we can simplify this. The 2 turns, I mean, the 2 halves the 60. So this is equal to 30 root 2. And do you know what we forgot to do? What I forgot to do is since it is heading in the negative y direction, we need to make this 60 negative. So it's comma negative 30 root 2. Okay, so another way of solving this problem, if you don't want to use the law of cosines, is that we can come up with the component form of the green vector by adding the um, planes vector to the, to the um, winds vector. And so the resulting vector then is equal to 0 plus, zero plus 30 square root 2 which is just 30 square root 2, comma, 600 minus 30 square root 2. So we can then come up with approximate values for that if we want to. But before we do that, I would like to um, figure out the magnitude. And the magnitude of this is going to be the x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared, square rooted. So we can say that the magnitude of the r-vector is going to equal the square root of 30 square root of 2 squared plus 600 minus 30 square root of 2 squared. Okay, And now that you know the magnitude of this, then we can answer the one question up here that says the plane's speed relative to the ground will be whatever this is. So you would then sit, plug this into your calculator and you would say that that's approximately equal to some speed. And the amount of flying off course, so if you, once we know the magnitude of this, then we could use we could use the, um, we could also find the angle using the inverse tan to find this angle. And um, we could use the inverse tangent to find, let's see, so we can, um, to find phi right here. And theta is equal to 90 degrees minus phi. Or you could use, um, you could use the fact that you know that this side is 60 degrees, that the wind is 60 degrees, and the angle across from it is what you're trying to find. And now you know, um, let's see, um, you know that this angle over here is 45 degrees, and the angle across from, and the side across from that is the magnitude of your vector. So you can do, use the law of sines to find the angle. Or you could use, um, the dot product, since we know what the, what the plane vector heading was, and we know what the resulting vector is, we can use the dot product to find the angle between the two vectors. And um, that means that the planes vector dotted with the resulting vector is equal to um, 0 times 30 square root 2 plus 600 times 600 minus 30 root 2. And that's going to equal the magnitude of the planes vector, which is 600, times the magnitude of the r vector, which you already solved for, times the cosine of theta, the angle between the two vectors.
So all we'd have to do is divide both sides by the magnitude of the plane vector and the magnitude of the resulting vector and then and then take the inverse cosine. So this part is just equal to zero. So you'd have the magnitude of the plane vector times the magnitude of the resulting vector. And then you can take the inverse cosine. So a number of different ways to do this problem. One, you could use the you could just look at the triangle and use the law of cosines. Okay, to find um, to find the magnitude of R, and then you can use the law of sines to find theta. Okay, so that's the first way. The second way is you could um, add add components. of the plane vector plus the wind vector equals the resulting vector. And once you did that, then you can find the magnitude of the resulting vector. And then you could use um, either the dot product or the law of sines again um, to, find, to find the angle between theta. So depending on what you're already doing for the problem or depending on um, what you're learning at the time, you could use whichever one works. I don't know which one I would use. Since I'm practically done with the dot product method, I'd probably use that method. Okay, I hope this helps.